Serious Survivor here. This video will discuss extra gear that we can add into our kits and that could take the place of some of our standard gear. But this gear comes with a pretty hefty price tag. So we're gonna look at some of the most expensive gear on the market. These are all additions to that already standard gear. No matter who the person is, no matter their stature or their prominence in today's society, when the grid goes down, chaos ensues, and we're in an SHTF scenario without any form of rule of law or any type of restraints being placed on anyone, then this is going to be a dangerous place, and it does not matter anymore how big my house was and how much money I had in my bank account, because with the grid down, the bank accounts are gone. So we want to use that money the best we can right now, and that's to prepare ourselves for an event like this. These items are geared at getting you from one location to your primary location because if money is no option, then your first and primary goal should be to obtain, purchase some type of bug out shelter, some type of bug out location. Something that could maintain a person or their group for extended periods of time, a place that's capable of generating its own power, whether that be through solar means, hydroelectric, or whatever other means. A place capable of purifying its own water on large scales so people could still have a shower and things such as that. If money is not an option, the first step is to acquire a bug out location, a place that you can retreat to, a place that you can stay long term with all of the supplies and gear necessary to ensure survival for an extended period of time. Transportation. Now in preparation for an event like this, especially if we're thinking an EMP, nuclear war, or something that can cause a large electromagnetic pulse, and not only bring the grid down, but damage most of our sensitive electronics and our devices and everyday items, then having a vehicle that's heavily protected, a vehicle that's blast and bullet resistant, a vehicle built to take punishment and survive. If money is no issue, then having a vehicle that can withstand just about any situation we could imagine could very well be the main or major factor that would get us back to our bug out locations. Of course, having something like a helicopter or a small personal plane would definitely be an advantage to anyone. It could take you straight to your bug out location with no hassle involved or not much. But if we don't have these options, then we can look at other things such as very heavy duty vehicles, so you could invest a lot of money and build a Mad Max type of vehicle here. You know, once again, these are the major advantages of having the money is that you can prepare ahead of time and have these types of things to be ready for any situation. With money not being an option here, the first item we need to put some thought into is body armor. There are many different types of body armor on the market, and a lot of the newer body armor is very high tech and extremely durable. Now keep in mind that body armor is not gonna stop highly penetrating rounds like your larger caliper rifles, uh, sniper rifles, things such as that, but it does give you adequate protection against smaller caliber firearms such as pistols. The variations of this range from total body protection including helmet, gloves, boots, to a simple vest or tactical gear that covers only a portion of your body. The advancements that have been made over the past few decades have increased the strength, the durability, and the lifetime of the body armor. Many different types of this on the market and some of the more advanced and the more modern types are actually liquid filled. The new liquid filled types of body armor, it works on a principle that the liquid solidifies as it's exposed to energy basically. And body armor is always a good idea. These types can be worn on the outside of your clothing or underneath your clothing. If you're trying to conceal yourself or trying to stay unnoticed with gray man tactics, then wearing the body armor underneath your clothing is probably the best option. There are also variations of body armor that defend against knife or bladed weapons attacks. These are very effective pieces of equipment and they're not that expensive. 
These will prevent you from being stabbed, sliced, cut, or slashed with a bladed weapon of any type. They're extremely durable, lightweight, and they do work. Navigation. When it comes to navigation, if we don't know how to get to where we want to go, then we're never going to make it there. Having ways to navigate is essentially important in this type of situation. Being able to properly use a map and compass and find the direction that you need to head in to reach your bug out location is an invaluable skill. But there's also, if money is not an option, then there are devices on the market that can make this even simpler for us. Some of the GPS devices, we can download maps of the entire United States, for example. So by downloading this map, we don't have to be connected to a grid. Now I realize the GPS would not be able to take a current location because maybe the satellites in the sky aren't working, but that's where the memory of the GPS comes into play. It'll remember your last known position or it'll remember your home position. And from the memory, you can plot your destination. The GPS will lead you to your bug out location. Now to power all these, we need a power source and that's where our solar chargers and chargeable batteries come into play. It would be of extreme benefit to someone to have solar charging devices. There's many of these on the market that can easily be rolled up and placed in your pack that can be strapped along the back of your pack and charging devices while you travel. But having power not only allows you to charge your devices, but if you plan all this beforehand, then the batteries for the devices you do have, if you purchase these types of batteries, the rechargeable type that can be charged through a USB port, Power is a commodity that most people will not be able to produce, but those who can produce power and those who can share it are gonna have a very good barter tool for someone in the apocalypse who happens to have some type of electronic device and they wanna hear their music or they wanna see their pictures. They're gonna pay or trade you food, ammunition, whatever you need for this opportunity for them to charge that device just one more time. Commerce. When we talk about making it through an apocalyptic scenario, in the beginning people are still going to put a high value on money. People always have, people always will, but the money itself may change as far as what is used for commerce. It may not be paper money and probably won't, but gold, silver, things like that. And if money's no option, then it's quite easy to put five to ten you know, gold one ounce bars into your concealable pack underneath your shirt and then five to 10 silver bars. This is always a good option if you have the chance. Safety. The safety category is talking about keeping us safe as individuals. A radiation detector. A radiation detector will detect the radioactive particles near you. Most of them on the market detect three types of radiation. The radiation detectors that I personally would recommend will be ones that test alpha radiation also. And here's a very good example of one. Meters like this test for the alpha particles, the beta particles, the gamma radiation, 
and X-ray radiation. Alpha, beta particles are extremely dangerous. Gamma, of course, is too. But the danger with alpha is most radiation detectors don't pick up alpha, which means when the alpha particles contaminate the food sources, the water, the average radiation detector is not gonna pick them up. And I'm gonna drink in contaminated water thereby giving me a very slow and very agonizing death, most likely. So the radiation detector must detect all four types of radiation. A gas monitor. Now, as you're bugging out, you may end up going through some places that you're not familiar with, places that you've never seen before, places that are partially destroyed. And having a gas monitor will help you to determine if there are any dangerous gases in the area. A gas mask. A gas mask is of essential importance. There are a lot of types on the market, and here are three highest ranked types right here. Just because these are the three highest ranked does not mean they're the only ones that will do the job. As many more will do the job just as efficiently. I use several different types myself. NBC suits, the large suits, which I have a couple of, but they require a bag of their own, which means that's an entire bag for just one suit. So the lower level chemical suits, the Tyvek, like this here made by DuPont, is about 10 bucks online. And we can get much more expensive ones that protect against, give us much higher levels of protection. And with this chemical suit, you also need to make sure that you have the appropriate type of tape to tape up the around your wrists, around your boots, around your hood, things like that, to ensure that you get a proper seal. Duct tape, the T-Rex tape, uh, Tenacious tape, all those are excellent. Then there's also the Flex Seal tape, anything that will bond that area and keep it from leaking, letting particles in. Recon. With recon, when we hear the word recon, we usually tend to think military type operation, and that's what it's basically based on. We're generally talking about a team of two, maybe more individuals, will infiltrate an area and gain as much intelligence as they can, and then come back and inform the group. Recon without any specialized gear is I'm simply limited to what I can see, what I can hear, what I can smell, and then my gut instinct. But with gear, all of these abilities are basically enhanced. And we can do this, for example, with binoculars. But if money's no option on a set of binoculars, then the, some of the ones they offer on the market, night vision, thermal imaging, ADX power, recording everything on a memory card, which in itself is a major advantage in a situation like this because I don't want to expose myself for too long. So if I infiltrate an area and I use my binoculars and I actually take footage of that area, then I have the footage to bring back and to show the group and from there we can formulate a more accurate plan. So binoculars are an excellent resource but they're also a huge tactical advantage. The night vision goggles, I'm talking about the combat oriented goggles. In a dark situation, in a low light situation, these will give you a tactical advantage that's exponentially higher than we could imagine. Being able to see in the dark when your opponent cannot, this advantage in itself may be the deciding factor in some instances. A thermal imager, this will give you a good idea of how many people or other objects that are inside an objective. This allows me to accurately tell, or at least somewhat accurately tell, the size of the force ahead or the size of the group that I'm facing. Defense. One of your big means of defense is a booby trap. Now in the first few days of an event or the first 48 hours, 72 hours, as you're on your way to your bug out location, there will be times you have to rest. There will be times at night you bring the group to a halt. And to do that, you're obviously gonna put someone on watch, two people on watch if possible. But to be able to set up booby traps is also a very effective means of defense. This is a heads up advance warning system, perimeter alarm devices, that when one of these traps are set off, that it instantly notifies everyone in the camp that intruders are present. And these devices can be extremely high tech. You look at some of the high tech devices, but there's very effective low tech devices. These are also smaller devices that can be kept in a small case and you can tuck away in your bug out bag. If money is no option and if the laws where you live allow for it, then smoke canisters. 
and smoke canisters are essentially what we think of with smoke grenades, but these aren't exploding devices. These are devices that when we pull the pin and toss the device, a chemical reaction internal would generate high amounts of smoke and distribute it at higher velocities out of the nozzle. So it smokes up the area and it's really good to make escape to distract your enemy. A device I ran across the other day, and these are stun gun brass knuckles. Uh, don't really want to fight anybody, but in the apocalypse, that time may come, and it won't matter if you want to fight or not. A pair of these stun gun brass knuckles, when you hit someone with them, it's going to also impact that person with a million volts of electricity. So <laughs> this is a pretty powerful little device, and I recommend them if you can. They're not that expensive either. A weapon. Any bug out situation in which society has collapsed, you're gonna have to have a weapon. Without a weapon, all the other gear you got is basically useless because someone with a weapon will most likely come and attempt to take that gear. So a weapon, if money is no option, this can be a major factor in determining survival. And when it comes to weapons, and I recommend two pistols, a self-defense rifle, and a long-range rifle. The long-range rifle, these scopes actually lock in on the target that you aim at. And once the target crosses into the crosshairs, these scopes automatically fire your firearm for you. They're guaranteed not to miss. If you have about $5,000 to spend, then you now you have a hunting rifle that cannot miss. A self-defense rifle. Here we're talking about something that's a little smaller than your hunting rifle, something that's easier to handle, and something that can fire repeatedly in a short amount of time, and hopefully something that can also hold a lot of rounds of ammunition. There are many exceptional weapons on the market, and we look at a self-defense rifle. These rifles have a few things in common. The things they have in common is they're semi-automatic rifles, which means they will fire once every time I pull the trigger. This is not an automatic weapon, for those that do not know the difference. An automatic weapon continuously fires when you hold the trigger, a semi-automatic weapon fires once with each trigger pull. Find one that suits you as an individual, one that you like as an individual. Fire it, practice with it, get used to it, learn everything about it, and then you will be efficient with that weapon. For the pistols, one pistol that you keep at all times and then a backup pistol. I do recommend keeping these in the same calibers. The functionality is what counts, functionality and accuracy. And this is a category in which you find a firearm that fits you as an individual, one that fits your hand, one that you fire well, and one that you enjoy firing. A suppressor. A suppressor is a device that suppresses the sound of a fired round. And this will quieten your gun down exponentially but it will not silence it completely. When it comes to a 22 or something very small caliber like that, the suppressor does the job excellent. It will make that practically inaudible to the human ear for a small caliber, but for larger calibers, it does not silence them completely, but it does reduce the sound tremendously. And as we can see, the new technology may not be a necessity, but it can certainly simplify things and make our journey or our trip a lot easier and more feasible. Having navigation devices and all these other types of high-tech equipment can dramatically increase anyone's chances of survival in just about any situation. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching, and Serious Survivor, out.